Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. I'm Mal Lee. No, I can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. You don't need that. You don't need this mask. No, you don't. Get all tangled up here. That's for Happy Mask Day. Dear me, I'm sweating already. I've had it on about 30 seconds. I'm not going to get used to mask wearing day. I really, really am not, honestly. I'll have to stand outside and ask people to go in there and get me food for me. Will that happen? Please, please, please let me know if you'd like to get my food for me because I could not stand one of those masks. That is just a killer. Good luck to everyone who's wearing them. I'll keep you informed how I get along when I'm wearing the mask. But welcome to the grassroots show. Anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Maldi. A very warm welcome to the show and especially to Australia and to America where we're getting loads and loads of listeners and loads and loads of viewers because we're on DXTL TV from the Touchlands and that's on YouTube as well. So here you go. Big thumbs up to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, whatever you are, I hope you're having a really, really good time and I hope you're getting to grips with COVID-19 because uh, the world is not as we know it. And grassroots football is back, but not as we know it. And we're going to be talking about that very, very shortly. But first of all, I'd just like to add something that's very, very important. I loved Wednesday night just gone. I thought it was absolutely magnificent. 30 years without the Premier League. Don't switch off, please. It's only a couple of minutes, me talking about it. But hopefully you don't mind me celebrating because it was a wild night on Merseyside. The majority of people stayed at home, and I think the reports between 1,000 and 3,000 fans turned up to Anfield, but those are the die-hard fans that really, really... It's in the, well, it's like it's in all our bloods, but hey-ho, you know, no harm was done, nine arrests. The police probably expect that, but these police, honestly, they patrol 60,000, 95,000, 100,000 fans week in week out at Premier League ground so it probably was a double for all those police officers whether they were more called out but I'm sure the police officers stood away as well they wanted to celebrate and be part of it I wonder how many had sneaky phones over filming not just for the police force but for themselves come on you officers out there you had to celebrate as well the only thing you couldn't do was wear red so Jurgen Klopp and all the team it was absolutely brilliant Thank you very much for everyone who tuned in. Sounds like I'm getting a bit of a cold. Hopefully I'm not. I think it's that mask and the dusk. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but hey-ho. I'd rather drink me a cup of tea like this. I could never drink a cup of tea, could I, wearing my new mask. But how many of you all wear them and have worn them today? Okay, so there you go to all our viewers and all our listeners. A massive well done to Liverpool Football Club. 30 years, we all have our final games on Sunday and I'm sure that Newcastle will beat us as well because I can't see clear heads for those Liverpool players because that must have went on all night and they must have had a little bit of a break in between, mustn't they? So hey-ho, maybe it's a chance for the kids and maybe Adam Lallana because this is his last game, so I should imagine... He will go on. Why he didn't go on last night, I'm not too sure. But I think Jürgen wanted the three points there against Chelsea because of any slip-ups, wasn't he? Because remember, the rubbing it into us when Steven Gerrard slipped up. But hey-ho, there was no slip-up. Seven games in hand and we had the league backed up. We're up and running for next year. Hopefully, it's going to be a cracking season. There's a few teams I can see there that really are going to challenge. And, you know, the, those teams at the very bottom of the table who have stayed up. They can, you know, we all put it down to a poor season, a bad season for them. We've had a great season, but they can actually dominate as well. Look at the game between Leicester and Man United, all to play for there. It's between Leicester and Manchester United, who goes in to the Champions League, or will Chelsea lose, and maybe they draw. It's that close, and the bottom is very, very tight as well for one team, or two teams who could be going, well, three teams are going down. Regardless, it's one of those Sundays where it all soups up and everyone is enjoying themselves and getting used to a massive finish at the last game of the season. You couldn't forecast it, could you? Unbelievable. So good luck to every team on Sunday. Good luck to all the supporters. 
And as I say, it won't be long before we're hoping the spectators will be back. We're going to, well, the government's not me, are going to wean them all in. And I'm sure last night there could have been at least a thousand fans welcoming there, five thousand for the size of the grounds. And what we're doing now in pubs, clubs, and not clubs, but restaurants, hey ho, you know, let's start bringing some sort of normality back to the fans. They're all out at the grounds anyway, celebrating. Touch wood, no COVID 19 at the moment or reported cases. Maybe there will be. We're not too sure what this is going to bring over the next couple of weeks. And we certainly don't want stage two. No, we don't. Fingers crossed, everything is good for us all. Okay, just I'd like to say there as well, um, Liverpool fans have been putting on the um, social media, you may have seen it, that they just want Liverpool to lose against Newcastle on Sunday. And I was wondering why at first, but do you know what? It just goes over your head and common sense prevails there when you look at it and they're on 96 points. And I don't have to explain what the 96 means to Merseyside, do I? Or and beyond as well. 96 points, Hillsborough, remember, and I'm wondering, is that very, very fitting indeed? We have won the title on 96 points, you can see that at the moment, so it doesn't really matter. But let's see what happens on Sunday. So it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Win or lose, it doesn't make any difference. Or even draw, draw does I suppose. But at the end of the day, I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. So um, let's just so that many of those team or supporters get their wish, and let's see what happens on Sunday. So as I say, good luck to every Premier League team. Um, football should have been back in grassroots football, but it's not at the moment. We're talking about maybe Jeffrey Humble facilities opening up um, tomorrow. It could be. We're not too sure that could happen all over the weekend, so um, we're still hopeful about our summer camp, DXDL summer camp, and I've had loads and loads of inquiries, and it's going to be a three-day one if it does go ahead, and that's the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of the last week in August, so if you'd like to put that down in your diaries, people are asking me what would it be, well it'd be £12 per day, now we're not too sure, we can't say exactly what's going to happen on the day at the moment, because we don't know about social distancing. They might say groups of 10, pointless. You need a good, really, really good turnout for the kids to enjoy themselves and have a really, really good day when the summer camps come because the kids have had a raw deal over the COVID-19. Many are getting away now. People are going on holiday. If you're returning on holiday today, tomorrow, Sunday, well, welcome back and I hope you've had a fantastic time. I really, really do. I'm still hopeful, hopeful that we'll go away to Turkey in October, it's all inclusive, so I'm trying to lose weight as you know, so it's all inclusive, but then again, I think what I've heard on the grapevine is that um, the travel companies are cancelling all inclusive because there's no restaurants open, and um, let's just keep fingers crossed because my Cyprus holiday was cancelled and I didn't get my three week annual break, so everyone knows that I've been in the studio in the office really working hard to get this done and I do need a holiday I assure you because I was on my knees the other day today I've been painting getting the units up and I know there's loads of offers out there thanks to the two Collins Colin Hunt and Colin Fulton they want to come in and help me but I know what will happen lads you'll come in and do you know what we just talk about football and nothing will get done we know that but I'm trying to do it all trying to get it all done so next time that you come in you can sit down and have a lovely show with me we can talk about what's been happening over the last few months and what's going to happen hopefully if it's good news for the future for us all especially in grassroots football well we said grassroots football is back but not as we know it can i just have a sip of tea if you don't mind please love me ale grey tea i must admit i've got lazy grey there over a certain person who asked me to order them so i'll let you know that next week hopefully we'll get a show in and I'll have one or two more guests, but I'm racing and racing to get the studio and the office done. It's looking immaculate, it's looking like gold. It's a dream come true for me, and I hopefully when you lot come in to the studio, it's a dream come true for you, because everyone who walks in loves the studio, and I do myself, because it's been a lot of hard work, I assure you. And as I say, let's just hope 
we can get all the guests in that I'm expecting because it's going to be one grassroots weekender show from now on when they do come in because it'll be guest after guest after guest and it'll be loads of you from the football family as well because I know you've all been in touch thanks to the parents, the mums and dads being in touch about the summer camp as well and we have sent out emails so we're uh, fingers crossed that'll go ahead but in the meantime yes in the meantime grassroots football is back the masks are back but it's not as we know it so we're talking about the masks coming back i don't know what's going to happen in grassroots football by the time that kicks off we're talking about september now if you've taken the time out and read over um what the fa the government are expecting us all to do um and my honest opinion i'll hold my hands up years ago when i was coaching managing it was absolutely fantastic you know we did to the adhered to the rules the regulations and we still do today but um looking at them i'm sort of glad that i'm not a football coach at the moment um this is my honest opinion i don't think there's many many coaches who've really gone over and looked at the uh, the do's and the don'ts basically what is supposed to happen in grassroots football as i say it's back but not as we know it now even the referees are going to be hurried along with free kicks, corners, um, no spitting and I thought there was no spitting in the Premier League, correct me if I'm wrong but every play player seems to be spitting now which I don't like, it's a pet hate of mine and I certainly don't like that in grassroots football. So come on, let's lead by example professional footballers, pack the spitting in, Covid-19 we're talking about and you're left, right and centre spitting on the field of play, what message does that give to the young kids? There's less, um, I suppose, aggression on the football pitch without the crowd saying, I don't know if you noticed that in all the Premier League games, tackles, meaty tackles have gone in, one or two sendings off. Um, is the less bookings? That'd be great when we get the figures off the PGMOL, the FA, when it comes out towards the end of the season, what the game's brought. Um, so the behaviour of players has it been A1 again. Have Liverpool finished top of the fair play? league they were top uh, for the umpteenth season on the run it remains to be seen but um, yeah it's all been different it's all been changed in football and it's going to be changed as well because when you look at the advice given um, COVID-19 my honest opinion I do not know who's going to police this we'll be out and about and we'll remind uh, spectators mums and dads and managers all about it as well but you know we can only report back but we're voluntary a voluntary organisation that work with grassroots football we have done since 2003 bringing people together now i'm baffled at that one now to be bring people to social distance together now because it's not bringing them together and looking at the same grassroots football tell me if i'm wrong correct me if i'm wrong or if i miss anything else maladontextaline.com because i'm sure you're all very very interested and that you're all doing the hard work to bring back the, the kids because you're seeing on social media games on i come home from um, Warrington on the M62 the other day and um, it was late evening and I did witness a game that was going ahead and the kids looked around about under 10s and um, it wasn't behind closed doors you could just see through the trees and I, I got onto it and I just thought games aren't be, are supposed to be allowed till September so if we're looking at games like that are you all adhering to social distancing the Covid-19 and what I do feel sorry for is the paragraphs that all suggest every club, every team need a COVID-19 officer to take charge, to make sure names and addresses are given, to make sure that people who come to the club have not suffered with COVID-19, are not suffering, taking all details. If any suspects are there, those COVID-19 officers have got a make everyone aware and stop them coming and basically there's a lot to do with the responsibility of the COVID-19 officer um, because that's what I read it's your responsibility now what I'm reading into this is if I was a COVID-19 officer and I was voluntary or I'd been nominated I'd really look into it why should you be responsible for things that go on in grassroots football. 
you, it's, you know, you're voluntary, it is a lot of work to do. Now, if I'm right in thinking that the FA are getting rid of a lot of people from grassroots, making them all redundant, well, there's an opening there for them to bring them back into grassroots football and let them monitor them themselves and they're more official. So there's an opening for creating more jobs. And I'm just wondering if anyone in Safeguarding is watching this in the FA who's lost their job or losing their job, or anyone else in County FAs, well, why don't you put that to them? Why do we have COVID-19 officers from grassroots football teams? I think they do an absolutely unbelievable job, especially the coaches, you know, everyone who, who's getting involved in it. We don't give them enough credit. They're all voluntary and they all do a fantastic job. Now they've got to take on the responsibilities of all what's happening in COVID-19 and the kids, uh, the disinfectants of the balls, the nets and everything about it. Really, I can see codes of conduct coming out, all changed, but codes of COVID-19, that's what's going to come out and people have got to adhere to them and make sure everyone else can just see a lot of arguments. So there's a little, a big opening here if it don't cross the line again to try and keep people apart because people are not just fighting over the wearing of masks week in, week out. It's happening in America, it's going to happen over here. If you haven't got it on, there's going to be all kinds of arguments and fights breaking out. We don't want that. Please, we don't want that. And I can just see in grassroots football again, trouble brewing because people aren't adhering to the COVID-19 rules and regulations. And I don't know whether you agree with me out there. There's a lot to do. The free kicks, you've got to get onto it. You've got to... Uh, there's, there's another one where a coach, a manager, cannot touch the child if they, they're injured. They can't talk to them. They can't run onto the pitch and, and deal with them, which has happened in grassroots football for many, many years. We all know that the safeguarding rules and regulations come in. I totally agree with that. You've got to have your DBS check, your first aid certificate. But if a child gets injured and it's not serious, then what we've been doing for many, many years, like yourselves, like your committees, is trying to keep pit, their parents away from the pitch side and off the pitch. Now they're being encouraged to run on to deal with their child if it's not too serious. Now, okay, fantastic, but now are we making the coach redundant, the manager redundant? They're going to be stood there with open arms and they've got the first aid certificates and they know what, how to approach a child. It's going to happen. Yes, they did try and stop this. Um, no touching with the safeguard. We know that. We do know the rules and regulations. But if the child is seriously injured or uh, broken leg or something, that's not what we, we expect in grassroots football. If it's a serious head injury as well, then you have to be the PPE who have to come on with the gloves, the equipment, the just sterilisation, everything, you name it, they've got to be really up and they have to run on. So like a physio who runs on that you've seen in the Premier League and they have to deal with the situation there. I'd love your thoughts on all what is going to happen in grassroots football because all I see at the moment is many of you turn around and saying, great, fantastic, friendlies are on, can't wait, does anyone want a friendly? I love it and I can't wait to football to come back, but when it's all safe and well for everyone to do so, because if you've got to practice now to get your team ready for September, for the new league starting, don't know what the leagues are going to be doing either, how it's going to all set out, plan out. Over the next few weeks, we're really going to see it. But games are taking place now in grassroots football. Friendlies are being organised. Teams, new teams are happening. And I see a lot of posts about people saying that there's a lot of kids looking for teams. What is the reason by that? Has many teams or have any teams that you know of folded? Please let us know about it. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Have news of friends on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites. And also you referees, will you be coming back? Do we take it for granted? I put a post up the other day, one or two, give me some feedback that they'll be back. Um, and Schwarzenegger, Tony Mallon, I think we know him. You couldn't keep him away no matter what. But many referees didn't reply and I'm just wondering whether you've had enough or you are going to come back but you want to take a back seat and just to see what is happening in all the hubs, what is happening on grass pitches and what is happening within clubs before you make a return and take up the whistle again. If you're a referee we'd love to hear from you. Parents, managers, committee members, referees, even kids, let's hear your thoughts about grassroots 
football. Thank you for taking the time out to tune into the Grassroots Weekender Show. We'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7 pm. So, for myself, Marley, and all the team here at the Grassroots Show, don't cross the line and respect program. We wish you a very good night, and we'll see you tomorrow at 7. Be safe. Good night. God bless.